For the Battle of Berlin in April to May 1945, the defending German units were critically short of tanks. When the Soviet offensive towards the Nazi capital opened on the 16th of April 1945 at the Zalow Heights, east of the city, the Germans defending the wider Berlin area and that part of Germany comprised 770,000 troops from various types of units, from frontline army and Waffen-SS divisions to Volkssturm home guards. With 425 tanks and 1,070 tank destroyers and assault guns between them. On paper, this sounds impressive until you compare the figures for the attacking Red Army. The 1st and 2nd Belarusian and 1st Ukrainian fronts fielded 2.3 million men for Operation Berlin and about 6,250 tanks and assault guns between them. For many weeks before the Soviet attack, the Germans had scoured the Reich capital and many other places for any armoured vehicles, combing vehicle repair facilities and training units to augment the existing forces. This was all part of the hasty preparations of fortified positions around and within Berlin, based on a series of static stop lines or rings constructed out of, in the outer suburbs, railway embankments, concrete bunkers, water features and anti-tank ditches moving deeper into the city with heavily fortified buildings, trench systems, anti-tank barricades across the streets, and the huge Berlin flak towers and their massive artillery. Soviet armour would be at a disadvantage fighting in an urban environment, Red Army tanks vulnerable to ambush by German infantry teams using the formidable Panzerfaust anti-tank rocket and also mines. And even though heavily outnumbered, the German defenders caused significant attrition among Soviet infantry and armour fighting into the city centre. Just under two months before the Soviet assault opened on Berlin, a bright spark realised that tanks that were sitting in repair depots that had been deemed unrepairable due to previous battle damage or other problems could be reused. On the 22nd of February 1945, the order was given to form a new tank company to assist in the defence of the capital. It was to be equipped with Panthers and Panzer IVs, but the difference with other Panzer companies was one of mobility. The tanks could not move, and the new unit's name said it all, Panzer Company Bodenständig Berlin, or Tank Company Static Berlin. Damaged tanks were carefully selected, and in total 10 Panthers and 12 Panzer IVs were specially modified. Krupp Druchmüller, based at Berlin Tempelhof, stripped the tanks of their engines, transmissions and road wheels, suspension and any other parts that could be recycled into recoverable fighting tanks. What remained was a working turret and main gun. The turret's armour was increased using welded on patches, and more armoured plate was welded onto the empty rear engine deck and the surplus driver's compartment. These 22 tanks were then moved into positions to cover important road intersections within the city, to act as static pillboxes, their powerful guns more than capable of knocking out any Soviet tank. During the actual Battle of Berlin, in the city itself, the Germans had few tanks. Just a few dozen fully operational Panthers, Panzer IVs and Tiger Is and Twos. The static tank's big guns were therefore extremely useful in backing up the defences. Each tank had a reduced crew of three men, a commander, a gunner and a loader, all in the turret, tanks being dug down in the streets until only their turrets were visible. As the tank had no electrical systems, the turrets and guns were moved manually. Ammunition supply was less than a regular version of the tank, but sufficient to make these static tanks very dangerous adversaries. Photographs taken after the Berlin surrender revealed that some Panthers were surrounded by used shell casings, indicating very hard fighting. They were difficult positions to overcome, having local infantry support, and many were also protected by Panzerfaust teams, and they were a very useful addition to strengthening static defences, until eventually knocked out or abandoned as the sector fell to the Soviets or the shells ran out. Photographs taken after the war of these wrecked and abandoned tanks indicate just how fierce the fighting was for the city of Berlin, and how the Germans grabbed at anything they could to help defend their city. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.